everyone it's amber and welcome to my youtube channel amber's awfully awesome art today i will be playing around with some ring pours and my first one is on a 20 by 20 gallery wrapped canvas i have sprayed some water to stretch it out in the back so that paint doesn't pool in the center and i wanted to play around with negative space so this is my negative space base paint there's my consistency it is uh, mixed with 50% GAC 800 and 50% Floetrol and I used a mixture of paints to achieve that color so Amsterdam uh, Venetian Rose Amsterdam Persian Rose and I mixed this with Amsterdam Naples Yellow followed by Golden High Fluid Naphthol Pink uh, it's a really pretty rich uh, pink color coral pink color um, and I will be using mixed media girl ready to pour paints um, followed by the cup that I will be using is by Tracy Reed Designs Art. I will have both ladies' uh, YouTube channels and their websites linked down below. They have some really, really great, amazing paint pouring products. And my first layer is Mixed Media Girl Dreamy Blue. Uh, as I mentioned before, these are ready to pour and you don't have to mix any pouring medium in them, but if you want to, you can. Uh, and there's Mixed Media Girl Caribbean Teal. Um, you can also mix Floetrol if you want to, but as I mentioned before, there's no need to. They are ready to pour. And there's Mixed Media Girl Turquoise. This is a, a nice uh, mix between Cobalt Turquoise and just Turquoise. Um, and I'm adding some white just to break up the layers a bit uh, because my next layer will be Mixed Media Girl Merlot. This is a really uh, pretty burgundy plum color and I think it goes really well with white and then a metallic uh, sandwiched in between. And that's why I will be adding uh, Mixed Media Girl Gold. Um, the metallics do sell a little bit. Um, uh, so that may occur and this is followed by mixed media girl meadow green uh, it's a really pretty uh, bright green color and i did add some amsterdam olive green light that i had mixed up already um, i will have all the colors listed down below so don't worry you can check the description box out um, my next layer actually will be mixed media girl fairy dreams which is a rose gold color it is so pretty um and then I will add a layer of Mixed Media Girl uh, Royal Purple, and then that will be followed by Mixed Media Girl um, Electric Purple. Uh, I, I just really like this Electric Purple color. It's so cool. And then my last layer is uh, Inferno Orange. This is a really nice, deep uh, orange color. Um, that has reddish uh, tone to it. And then I will just repeat the layering until my cup is full and there are my layers right there uh the 20 so this is a 22 ounce uh ring pour cup uh, i felt like this was a little too big for the 20 by 20 canvas so definitely i would use a 24 by 24 canvas uh to pour on with this size cup but I ended up stretching off enough paint to where um, it worked out fine. Um, and here I am just steadily pouring um, my paint out and creating the ring pour. Um, and I will gently uh, spread my base paint that I have there around. I'm not going to just uh, immediately pour it around because that can cause the base paint to pool uh, in the center of my ring pour and then it will cause my ring pour to not be round anymore so i'm just gently spreading this out um and then i will use my spatula to um uh, spread the base paint out um as i mentioned before i mixed the base paint with 50 percent gac 800 and 50 percent floetrol no water i got this recipe from pieces of terra artistry um, who is a good friend and mentor of mine i will link her channel down below she does some amazing pearl cell pours uh, and she combines them with dutch pours um, she also does uh, uh, really nice dutch pours um, and just a bunch of other techniques so highly recommend her channel uh, we'll have it linked down below um, and here i am just gently spreading my base paint um, around 
and I'm not too worried about covering the edges because you're going to stretch this out um, which will cause uh, paint to flow over the sides so that'll cover it anyways uh, but you can um, paint your edges if you would like to um, I did that in my next uh, ring pour that I will show you guys um, and the same concept applies uh, like it would in a deconstructed bloom when you're stretching um, you stretch off the parts you don't like first and then you stretch off the parts that you do like last and with this one you just want to be very gentle because you want to keep the integrity of the rings um, so I'm just being very careful and going around first and then I will tilt towards uh, the side over there uh, I do want to leave negative space so i have to be mindful of that and here i am coming back to the center um, and going back to the side again um, i did lose some cool cells that i saw but i mean um, if you leave too much paint on then you risk cracking um, and crazing and you don't want that and it just takes forever to dry so i'm going back towards the negative space area to push some of that paint off um, and I wanted to make sure that my rings stayed round um, or, or enough to where you could see the lines. So I, I wasn't going too crazy with the tilting. Um, I'm just covering some of my edges and my gloves were so dirty that I ended up uh, sprinkling some of the dark green paint on there from the ring pour. So I'm just scraping that off and covering that and, and getting a nice even coat of the negative uh, space color um, and here are the wet results I uh, wanted to experiment with diamond dust on this piece um, and just use it in the center I will have the link for the diamond dust below and there's a really cool area that I really liked of the cells and of course the um, metallics did cause some cells also that were really pretty are really pretty um, and as I mentioned before, I wanted to use diamond dust, and I got that idea from watching Massey Art Studio. Um, I will have their channel linked down below. Uh, and here is the dry result. This has no varnish, no resin on it, and just look at how shiny and beautiful um, the paints turned out to be. Um, no cracking or crazing. Um, and the rings didn't really move, so I did stretch enough paint off. Um, and as I mentioned before, I will link Massey Art Studio's channel down below, and they do have a video on the diamond dust application. And here is the diamond dust. Um, I got it from Amazon, and I will link it down below. And I wanted to just use varnish to sprinkle this on. Um, so I will uh, spread my varnish out, and this is Liquitex Gloss Varnish. It doesn't really matter if you use gloss or matte or satin varnish because you will be sprinkling your diamond dust. Um, and I know by now people who varnish their pieces are probably having a heart attack because I just um, started brushing this with no, um, I guess, uh, uh, coherent way but again i just want to make sure that my ring pour part is uh covered in varnish i don't really care if the brush strokes are perfect i just want to make sure that i get an even layer of the varnish um because if i leave um the varnish as as it is the areas where there is too much varnish will have like chunks of um the diamond dust so yeah, I'm just making sure to spread it out evenly. And um, I did use resin in my second piece, which Massey Art Studio does. Um, and I just found that uh, technique to be a little difficult for me. So I experimented with the varnish. And here I am making sure that the varnish um, doesn't go over to the negative space area because I don't want any varnish in that or any diamond dust in that area because I will resin um, the negative space as well as the sides. That's why I applied uh, tape to the sides um, and I didn't want any diamond dust. So here I am just spreading this out and then I will sprinkle my diamond dust on here. I'm using a uh, shot glass cup I got from the Dollar Tree and 
Diamond dust is crushed glass, so you have to be very careful when you're using it. I do not recommend that you just, uh, you know, put your hand in the jar and sprinkle it out. No, don't do that. Um, it could hurt you or cut you. Um, so here I am just sprinkling this evenly. And if you have excess diamond dust, you will just shake it off and pour it back into your jar and reuse it. That's what I liked about the varnish. Um, because with resin, um, it kind of just gets stuck in there. Um, so yeah, here I am doing that and just going to shake off the excess right here. Uh, I have seen some people also use regular gel gloss um, uh, in smaller areas to apply the diamond dust and that works great also. Uh, I'm just gently uh, brushing off um, the excess. Again, be very, very careful. And I saved the sprinkled part and poured it back into my jar. Here is the area um, of the diamond dust alone. Uh, and the negative space hasn't been resined yet. Um, so that will be my next clip where I will resin the edges and the negative space. Um, and I use Mixed Media Girl Resin. Again, it's super amazing. Highly recommend you use it. And here is the result of where I have applied the resin. Resin self-level, so it'll go wherever you want it to. Uh, so I didn't really have an issue of it uh, going into the diamond dust area. Um, so yeah, there you have that. And next will be the dry result. Um, it turned out super pretty and sparkly. Um, so definitely we'll be experimenting with diamond dust again. Uh, and the ring pours and here is the dry result of the resin and the diamond dust and I hope you enjoyed this ring pour um, and next will be my traveling ring pour. Okay, everyone, my next uh, pour will be um, a traveling ring pour and I wanted to play with black negative space it's a mixture of amsterdam lamp and oxide black and uh, golden uh, carbon black and i did use 50 percent gac 800 and 50 percent floetrol to mix it with i stretched my canvas out by spraying some water and i painted my edges black and i will be using mixed media girl paints again so my first layer is um, mixed media girl white and this will be followed by mixed media girl merlot and that will be followed by uh, mixed media girl um fairy dreams which is a rose gold color and my next layer will be caribbean teal then turquoise uh, followed by meadow green and then um the rose gold again and that will be followed by um electric uh purple and i basically will repeat the layers again i actually didn't like how i poured my uh, ring out my traveling ring pour out so i scraped it and redid it um, and on this one, I did apply diamond dust as well, um, but I did what the Massey Art Studio did. I uh, did it with resin. Uh, I didn't have a good result like they did. Um, I will link their channel down below, so definitely check their uh, video out on that. Um, I also mixed different micas and glitters in the diamond dust, and I felt like the glitter overtook everything, so I didn't really like how the piece turned out with the diamond dust um, so i definitely will stick with varnish or gel gloss to apply diamond dust um, and again i will have all the colors listed down below uh, so check out the description box and also um you know if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me i will be more than happy to answer them and um here is my traveling ring pour and I will show you um, the wet results with the resin along with the dry result. Um, and again, I wasn't too happy with how the diamond dust application turned out with this. But yeah, I'll let you enjoy the rest of this process and, and see the end result. And uh, leave a comment in the comment box. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, and share if you want to. 
Um, and I appreciate you all for watching. And I uh, have my coupon codes listed down below for the Shelley Art Bloom course and the Smart Art courses with Rinska Mali and Olga, as well as Rinska's Dutch Bloom course. Highly recommend those. You can uh, save 15% um, by, uh, by using my Shelly coupon code um, and also save $10 by using Amber 10 for the Smart Art courses. So they will be linked down below. Well guys, you've seen um, the resin diamond dust result. Like I said, the glitter really took over and um, I didn't really like the application with resin, so I'm sticking with the varnish. And of course I will not mix other micas um, or glitter, but I do like the pattern and it was a learning experience. And I hope y'all enjoyed this uh, video. Guys, before I leave, I wanted to share some super exciting news. I will be doing my first ever Bloom collaboration next Tuesday, starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, February 28th. And to kick us off, it is the awfully amazing Garrick Brown from Garrick Brown Art Studio, and that will be followed by myself. And next will be Lori Houston from Lori Houston Art. She does some amazing flower pops. And that will be followed by Louise from Louise McKay Art. She has awesome functional art and blooms. And last but not least is the awesome Angelia Bliss from Angelia Bliss Art. She has some amazing abstract pieces along with Christmas ornaments. So please come join us next Tuesday, February 28th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Until then, stay safe and stay awfully awesome, guys.